Hi Bag Builders, it's Diane from Spencer Rogue Sewing Patterns and thank you for joining me on my tutorial for the Sport Look Sack. Really hope you're going to enjoy, enjoy it and find it easy to follow along. We're ready to start sewing so let's just dive in. So I'm cut out and I'm ready to go. I've cut out my outer fabric, I'm using upholstery fabric today um, but it works great for any heavy, medium to heavyweight fabrics, oil skins, cordura, cord, tweed denim. Um, weighty fabrics hold this bag really nicely. You can use quilting cottons um, but I would say add an extra extra layer of medium weight interfacing if you're going to do that. I've cut out my lining for which I've just used quilt weight cottons, anything lightweight for that. Um, I've used medium weight interfacing on every single piece here apart from where I've used vinyl um, because it needs a little bit of body adding in. Fusible fleece, you the choice is yours whether to use fusible fleece or not. It gives extra body to the bag. I have used it in most of my samples. I'm not going to use it in this one because this upholstery fabric is quite hefty, but I have used it on lightweight vinyls and cork, and it, it does give that extra substance to the bag. You'll need two zippers, a seven inch number three zip and a 10 inch number five zip. You'll need some D-rings, uh, three quarter inch D-rings, either two or three. For this project the choice is yours and cord now cord is quite important for this i've used marine cord which i found online at ebay but you can get it in diy stores but there's some fantastic um different cords available I'll just show you a few some fabulous color choices which i've used in some of the planer bags really make a difference to your finished sack so this one's six millimeters width so you can see it's quite light i've tended to use around eight millimeters i found the best this is 10 mil which is great if you're using making a man's bag or a plain bag this was the eight mil i used for most of my projects which i found was a really really good good width but you can pick it up cheaply most places ebay online and your local diy stores i've got all-purpose thread that I'm using, um, just 100% polyester thread. I'm going to use a seam allowance of one centimetre or three eighths of an inch all the way through the project and I think we're just about ready to go. So we're ready to make a start on the front pocket of the bag. The things you need for that are your 10 inch zip and we're going to start by adding the zip tabs to it. So take one of your zip tabs and lay it underneath right side up and lay another on the top. So you're making a sandwich with that zip. Clip it in place and we're going to seam just across the edge here with a one, in, a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do that on both sides. Let's just pop that on there too. You can use a little bit of sticky tape, double-sided tape if it helps. I'm just gonna clip it on this instance. I'll just seam across those two edges. So I've stitched along the edges there, just open them out, press them away from the body of the zip. You can see we've got a nice neat end. Take those back to the machine and we're going to top stitch all the way around that tab, about three millimetres, anything from three millimetres to six millimetres, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch from the edge. You're just going to see that line of stitching when the bag's finished, you're not going to see those along the outside edges, so don't worry too much if it's not the tidiest, the tidiest bit of stitching you've ever done. So I've stitched around my zip tabs and we can now attach the lower part of the pocket, front pocket. So grab your piece C. The zip I'm going to fold in half just to find the centre point and just mark it with a pin just so we know we're going centrally to the bag. I'm going to fold my front pocket in half just to find the centre front there. Attach those up. I've actually attached my logo tab here already. Um, you can attach a logo tab anywhere in the bag. I just like the idea of putting it in the middle of the pocket there. So take your zip, matching up centres, lay it face down on top with your puller to the left when closed. I'm going to clip that in place. So we're matching up the edge of the zip tape with the raw edge of the top of the pocket piece. So put that in place. Then take your pocket piece F and line up one of the long raw edges right side down with the top of that zip tape. So that is now face down. 
and your pocket bag, sorry, your pocket pieces face up. So we've got a zip sandwich there, line up the sides, make sure everything's nice and straight and clip in place across the top. Remove those clips you put in before. I'm now going to take that to the machine and I'm going to stitch right across that top edge with a six millimeter or quarter inch seam allowance. So I have a zipper foot on my machine and I'm going to stitch across the top edge of that zip. When you get to the zip puller underneath, raise your presser foot and move your zip out of the way, the puller. We don't want lumps and bumps in the zip. And carry on. Back stitch at the beginning and end of every seam. And that's our first side attached. Next, trim your zip tabs down to match the width of your fabric. And then we're going to flip that fabric over so it's right sides facing, sorry, wrong sides facing. So you can see the pocket front there. Just press that pocket front down and away from your zip teeth. And then we're going to top stitch along that edge about an eighth of an inch or three mil from the edge of the fold. So that's one side of our zip attached. If you flip the panel over now, so you can see the right side of the pocket lining and fold it up so the other long edge meets the top edge of the free side of the zip. I'm going to flip that in place again. Now you can baste across that for the time being or you can just clip it. I must admit I tend to baste most of these things because it gives a much better finish much less wobbles in your zip as an end result. I'll just clip it today for speed. Once you've done that, grab your upper pocket, sorry, your upper outer piece B. I'm going to turn up, press up a five centimeter or two inch hem with right sides together at the ironing board, just so you can make a nice sharp crease that you're going to be able to see afterwards. So once you've got that in place, open it up again, flip your lower pocket panel over and we're going to lay our upper body face down on top, matching that free edge of the zip tape where we've just clipped the lining. Line your sides up, line the top up and clip that in place. So I'm going to take that to the machine and again I'm going to stitch across the top of there with a quarter of an inch seam allowance or six mil. Okay, I'm going to sew the top edge of that zip. I'm actually sewing from the reverse of the outer fabric because I find it's usually a lot firmer so it holds, it holds your stitches a lot better without shuffling around. When you get to your zip, move the puller out of the way again. Just lift your presser foot. We don't want wobbles. So that's the second side of our zip attached. And now we want to make the lip to conceal the zip. So lay it with your body piece uh, wrong side up. That's your top body piece. And where you've made that crease, just fold it back along that crease and you'll find there you have that nice lip edge. So if you unfold it you'll see it's just a fold in the fabric but it's a nice a nice touch. So what we want to do now is if you like you can top stitch that edge. I don't need to on this because it's creased quite nicely but if you're using something like vinyl or cork that doesn't hold a crease very well you can do that. Clip at the sides and just to hold that in place I'm going to stitch within the seam allowance just along those edges there. Little tip just before you stitch those edges down, if you want to check the placement of your crease, you can grab your back panel and just make sure it's the same length. You've got the opportunity there if it's a little bit shorter or a little bit longer just to adjust that crease so you know they're both going to end up at the same length. So I've just tacked down the sides there within the seam allowance. 
we now want to make sure that this fold stays in place so I'm going to flip it over and we're going to sew along this line of stitching here so follow that line as precisely as you can and that will show on the front here so you do want it to be straight and you need to keep it as tidy as possible so let's take that to the machine so I've left the zipper foot on my machine I'm going to back stitch to start I'm going to follow that line So we do need to keep it nice and straight and need to make sure that fold stays in place. I have put a pin in the bottom of the fold here, you've got to be careful where you're putting them, you don't want them up here or you'll end up with it in your stitching. So we're still following along the zip teeth, so that's why we've still got our zipper foot on. So as I say, try and follow that original stitch line if you can, or work just a fraction inside it. Move your zip puller, don't forget that one. Cut it, with through. Back stitch again. And let's flip that over. And you should have a really nice straight stitch line there. So that's our front and completed. Quite easy, wasn't it? So just trim up these pocket edges. You can see that they're sticking out slightly at the bottom, but that's fine. Just trim it to match the outer. And then if you're using fusible fleece, this is the time to add it. So flip your panel over, grab your fusible fleece, and you're going to position that um, in the centre. I've actually cut down the fleece by a centimetre, or three eighths of an inch, all the way around so it doesn't get into the, the seams to reduce bulk. So apply your fleece to the front and the back outer at this point. So it's time to make our strap carriers. Take your two strap carrier pieces each and we're going to fold them in half along the centre with the wrong sides together. Open it out again so you can see the crease and fold the two sides in to meet the crease again and fold back over itself to conceal any raw edges. Now we're going to take that to the machine and we're going to top stitch both sides along the long edges, one eighth of an inch, three millimetres from the edge all the way along on both pieces. So I'm going to edge stitch that strap carrier. So once we've edge stitched that, we're going to thread on our first D-ring. Fold it over so it's enclosed in the end and stitch it together just to keep that in place. So within the seam allowance so you're not going to see it at the end. A couple of lines of stitch in there. If you wish you can also add an extra line of stitching right up next to the D-ring to stop it moving in use later. So do that with both strap carriers and then we're going to attach them to the back of the bag. So take your back panel, that's the plain one, piece A, and we're going to base that onto the side seam 8 centimetres, which in old money is about 3 inches up from the bottom edge. So line that up with the bottom and just clip that into place. Yeah, I'm going to baste along there within the seam allowance just to hold it until we've got the bag constructed a little further and I'm going to do the same on the other side of the bag. So that's my two strap carriers basted to the side. Just a little tip here, obviously I've done them at right angles to the side seams but you could put them angled upwards as well. That also works and gives a nice effect. So it's time to make our handles. Grab your pieces J, just as a word of warning, Make sure you're grabbing pieces, Jay, because the facing looks very similar, but it is wider and it's shorter. So just make sure you've got the right ones. It's the longer of the two. So we're going to make those handles by folding them over in half. I found the easiest thing to do is actually mark the halfway point with a pen, just to be sure, because I'm using vinyl. If you're using fabric, you can take it to the sewing machine, sorry, to the ironing board, and you can just um, fold it in half to give yourself a visible crease. But as I'm using vinyl, making my life harder, I'm going to use a pen mark. So 
fold the sides in then it's really just as we did with the strap carriers fold the sides in to the center if you're using fabric just do it go ahead and do everything at the ironing board you don't have any of this to do you can also use double-sided tape which is probably a lot quicker and probably more efficient but um, I'm quite happy making a few short straps without any tape. And then fold it over again so we can seal in the raw edges. It's right in half again. Clip it in place. Again, you can do all this at the ironing board if you're using fabric, much easier. And then we're going to take that to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch again an eighth of an inch or three millimeters from each each long edge so let's top stitch the handles and um, because i'm using vinyl here i've actually changed to a walking foot top stitching handles is quite nice to have a long stitch length as well just as a feature i often do do it in a contrast sewing thread as well i'm going to stitch, switch up my stitch length to three here and then plod my way along. And repeat that with both handles. So time to attach our handles. Take your front panel and lay it face up. Take one of your handle pieces and lay that with the handle facing onto the body of the fabric and the edges I'm going to line up at 11 and a half centimeters or four and a half inches in from each side. That's the edge of the handle. So I've clipped those in place. Um, we're just gonna base them on at the machine but you've got an option here if you wanted to add a D-ring. Um, I quite like to add one because if you just put it on at this point You've got a nice little attachment for a key ring or a tassel later on. So just move it out of the way and let's go and baste those. So let's baste those on. Stay within the seam allowance. That's one. Here too, by the way, you do have the option to angle those handles inwards too. So they don't have to be at right angles. You can, you can sort of point them inwards so you've got a more of a pointed shape when the bag's finished. Either works well. So attach the handle to the back panel in exactly the same method. Next we're moving on to the facing. So first of all we're going to flip that over and I'm going to turn a hem right sides together, sorry wrong sides together and fold a centimeter or three eighths of an inch on the end there. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. And then we're gonna take that to the machine, do that with both facings. And then we're gonna take those to the machine and we're going to stitch those secure along both of those edges. So I'm gonna stitch along there just to secure those in place about a quarter of an inch from the raw edge. And on the other side. Try and keep it quite nice and straight because you do see this on the outer of the bag. Back stitch. And then we want to fold that in half along the length and baste it in place. So within the seam allowance, just to hold it in place for the time being. So match up your folded ends. And repeat that with both facings. So I'm going to set my front body panel and lay it face up. And taking one of my facings I've just completed, I'm going to lay that so that the raw edge, one raw, long raw edge is lined up with the long raw edge at the top of the bag. Place it centrally and clip it in place. You should have about 2.5 centimetres or an inch at each 
edge free. Just check it central. It doesn't matter if it's a few mil out. It really isn't going to make any difference, but you should have a good gap at both sides. And then again, we're going to base that into place and repeat with both the other side of the bag as well. So let's base that in place again within the seam allowance. So less than the size of the seam allowance. So it's not visible afterwards. So there's our front panel completed. I do the same with the back panel. So you've got two the same. So that's our back and front panel virtually completed. Time to take a well-earned tea break and then we'll move on to the lining. So time to start on our lining. I'm going to start with the inside zip pocket. So take your one of your pocket pieces D and you'll see from the pattern piece there's a, an oblong marked on there. We want to mark that onto the fabric. I find the easiest way to do that, place your fabric wrong side up obviously. The, the easiest thing to do is just to poke a biro, this is what I do, I'm sure you're not supposed to, poke a biro through the corners to make a little dot at each place and then just literally join the dots so you've got your square on there. Once you've got that marked out, grab your outer lining piece and with the curved edge to the bottom, right side up, we're going to lay this marked pocket panel right side down on top and you want that to be positioned centrally across the width and down from the top edge two and a half inches or 6.5 centimeters so you could fold in half to find the center or just eyeball it once you've got that in place pin that in position and we're going to stitch all the way around this oblong just one layer of stitches don't cross over each other because it can end up that you can't fold it through afterwards so just one long line all the way around So I've stitched my oblong and I want to snip along the centre of that and right into the corners and it's really important that you do get right to the stitch line without nicking the stitches. If it's easier you can draw a line on there in the centre just so you can see where you're going to be snipping and into the corners so you can see there where I'm going to be cutting. I find it easier to fold it in half and snip from the centre to start with and then work my way out right up into that corner and the other one so you can see we've got a nice letterbox shape there cut through so we would now want to turn that through so we'll do that at the ironing board but just a um, little tip is it's a little bit awkward to push through like that, it, it fights you all the way, so if you press the pocket up first, there and down from that side, then push it through to the other side, it does actually make things a lot easier, rather than struggling with it when you get here. And then press that flat on the other side. If you find you've got any puckers at all when you turn it over, that's because you haven't snipped into the corners far enough, so go back and snip a little bit further. So let me just go and press that. So that's our lovely letter box shaped slot all pressed neatly and we want to insert the zip there so we're going to in theory just drop that in behind. So you can just place it in there and pin it which is no problem at all but you'll find you get a few bumps with the pin so I do find I must admit using Wonder Tape here is a, is a big benefit. So flip that over, add a little Wonder Tape along the right up next to the edges. I mean don't worry if you don't have wonder tape. You can pin it in or clip it in. It just makes things a lot easier. Make sure it's right from the other side. Yeah. 
so that will make things a lot easier for stitching it now make sure you pull those out of the way so I'm going to take that to the machine and I'm going to stitch that around with a 1 8th of an inch or 3 millimeter seed allowance so let's stitch all the way around that I must admit I like to use a guide foot when I'm doing precise top stitching like this where I want to be really precise and keep it really nice and close to the edge so a guide foot or a blind hemming foot with your needle move just to the left work a treat so let's stitch around move your puller out of the way so you're not getting any bumps So that's our zip inserted. If you want to add a little extra strength to the edges, you can just zigzag over the short edge just to hold the zip in place even more securely. So that's your zip inserted. Obviously, I'm using contrast thread there just so you can see it better on the video. It's nicer if you do it in a, uh, in a tunnel thread. Flip that piece over and we're going to attach the back of the pocket piece now. So grab your other pocket piece D. I'm going to lay that face down on top there. So line up all the edges around the sides, top, bottom, and just pin that in place. We'll take that back to the machine, and we're going to stitch um, with a one centimetre seam allowance, so three eighths of an inch, all the way around that pocket bag. And you can use a lock stitch, just a regular straight stitch, or I actually prefer to zigzag stitch it, or use a decorative stitch, because um, not only does it give a little interest, it also is stronger because you've got a lot more stitches in there. So let's go right ahead and do that. Just a little tip here is um, if you are using a really lightweight fabric for the bag, you can turn it through the pocket when you bag it out at the end. Um, but I'm using upholstery fabric and it's far too big for that. Um, but if you are using lightweight, you can do that. So I am going to zigzag all the way around this pocket. So there's your lining pocket secured and finished. So that's our lining finished. We're now going to move on and assemble the bag. So take your back panel outer piece and lay it face up. Make sure you, your facing and your straps are lying onto the body of the bag and your raw edge is still at the top there. Grab your lining piece that you just added the pocket to and place that face down. So that's the back of the bag because your zip pocket is going to go in the back. So face down on top and we're going to clip across that top edge. Make sure you keep all those straps and facings down out of the way. I'm going to stitch from the other side again just as I said before because the outer is firmer it holds the stitches you're less likely to get any any pulling and any running away with you. So I'll clip that, flip it over, I'll take that to the machine and I'm going to sew across there with a one centimetre, the full seam allowance, three eighths of an inch. So let's stitch across that top edge. Back stitch, beginning and end. Then we're going to flip that over and I'm going to go to the ironing board and I'm going to press that seam open with the wrong sides together. So now I'm going to repeat with the other side of the bag. So I've got my front panel outer right side up and I'm going to lay my lining fabric right side down on top. Clip at the top edge. And in exactly the same way, I'm just going to stitch across that top edge and press, press it open. So that's both outers joined to the linings. We're not going to top stitch here, we're going to do that at the end. If you head to the ironing board and turn up a hem on the bottom of each of your linings by about two centimetres, it's actually slightly bigger than your normal seam allowance to reduce bagginess later. 
Um, so just press that up and it helps us later on to get a, a nice neat edge when we turn it through. So we are now going to attach the bag outer to outer and lining to lining. So take one of your panels and open it out, right side uppermost, and take your second panel. I'm going to lay that right side down. So you've got your right sides facing, make sure all your handles are nice and flat inside. So it's your outer against outer and your lining against lining. So matching all your edges all the way around. Make sure you've got your handles as flat as possible inside. Match those seams to start with where the linings meet the outer. You can trim them down a little bit if you like before you start. These aren't too bad. You could also nest the seams if you choose to. So have one going one way and one going the other. I'll do that on this. And just keep pinning until you've got everything nicely lined up and in place. When you get to your D-rings here, make sure they're lying inside. Sometimes it's worth putting a piece of sellotape on there just to keep them in. It wouldn't be the first time I've broken a needle or two on a D-ring. Keep pinning as you go. Make sure everything's nicely lined up. And then when you get to these bottom edges, we're going to leave a big gap in the bottom, something like eight inches. I haven't got the ruler with me, but basically once you've turned the corner, you can leave that open. So the bigger space you've got to turn through a bag at the end, the easier it's going to be. So I'll just clip that for the moment. You can always draw on your line in a couple of little lines just to remind you to stop and start at those places. So I'm going to take that to the machine and I'm going to stitch all the way around with a full seam allowance of one centimetre or three eighths of an inch, just leaving that bottom lining edge open. So let's seam all the way around the bag. I'm going to start at the bottom, just before the curve. Start where you made the crease in your lining. So it's, it's bigger than the 3 8 of an inch because your lining needs to be a, a tiny bit smaller than the, the outer bag itself because obviously it's sitting inside and you definitely don't want a baggy lining. So although the, the seam allowance all the way around is one centimetre, three inch or 3 8 of an inch, I would say on your lining itself, take a slightly, a slightly wider seam allowance to avoid any bagginess. When you come down to these pocket bags, we want to make sure that that's caught into the stitching so it's held down to the bit towards the base of the bag. And you'll also feel your D-rings coming up, which is a big lump of fabric in there and your machine may struggle to get over it. So let's get close and I'll give you a tip for getting over that. So I can feel it in there. Make sure that D-ring's well tucked into the inside and the ring is facing well away from your needle. If you're struggling with the amount of layers, if you've got an industrial machine, that'll go over there, no problem. But if you struggle with the amount of layers on a normal domestic, you can use a hump jumper. So basically that evens up the depth you're going to be stitching over. So usually okay going up towards it, though you can lift up the back and slot your hump jumper in behind your foot to help you along. So we're now heading over there, it's popped out the back and then put it in front of it so you're evening up the level again and you're not losing control with your feed dogs. Get where I am with my seam. And then once you're well clear of that, you can take it out and carry on. Any problem going round your curves, you can actually draw on there. There's no shame in drawing curves onto a project at all. I often do it. Here's my D-ring coming up again. Make sure it's tucked well in there, facing away. Get my hump jumper again. Once you see the foot starting to angle upwards, slot it in the back. And bring it round to the front. There we go, carry on. 
just going to widen my seam allowance again here because I'm on the lining. And finish on that corner again. There we go. So now we've got our bag together, we're just going to trim and clip the curves trim any edges just to make sure it turns through nice and sharply so I'm just going to snip around the outside here it's really just the curves to make sure you can get them smooth I'm trimming because it's such a big bag I'm not actually I'm not going to trim it back that much I'm just going to snip it the smaller the bag the more you need to trim clip and pair back really but something this size isn't too bad just getting the curve Nice and straight. Nice and straight. Nice and curved, shall we say. And then at the edges here, just where your seams meet, trim a little back if you want to. Again, it's not a big bulky bag this, so it's not too bad. I'll trim the I'll clip the curves on the lining a little bit as well. I will trim this lining back a little just because we've taken that bigger seam allowance. Okay, so we're now ready to turn our bag through. Let's, let me get rid of that rubbish and hand in. This is the moment of no return, are we ready? Pull it through, it's easy. It's an easy birthing, shall we say, this one. There's lots of space to get it turned through. So hand in the bottom, you don't need any sharp implements. It's a nice big curve on the bottom there. Lining tucked inside. Push it down. And there we have the start of our bag. So we've just got a few refinements to do now. So I'm going to take that to the ironing board. I'm going to press it, trim up any edges, any loose threads. And then we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to top stitch all the way around that top edge. But give it a nice press first. Make sure the lining is tucked well inside and you've got a nice clean edge at the top. So that's my bag nicely pressed and I want to top stitch all the way uh, along the top edge. So we're stitching along the bag itself, not along the facing. So I'm going to start that at one of the side seams. I'm just using the free arm of the machine because obviously it's easier to get the bag over. Nice long stitch length. Keep making sure your lining is tucked inside and well out of the way and in the right position. You can use a hump jumper when you come to the handles if you need it. And we're back to where we started. Just trim up and finish off. So we're almost there guys, let's just close the lining, pull it out from the inside of the bag, you'll find that where you pressed up that two centimetre or three quarter of an inch hem, you've got a nice edge to easily close that now. So I'll just clip in place, make sure your raw edges are tucked in and I'm just going to top stitch along there to close it. So let's close that lining, stitch nice and close to the edge, to the folded edge. Obviously do use a tonal fabric thread, I'm using a contrast just so you can see it. So take your bag to the ironing board, stick the lining back inside, show it some love and give it a really nice final press before we attach the, uh, the cords on the side. So well done everybody, that's our get bag almost completed. All we've got to do is attach the cords. So grab your cords, I've cut mine into two, two meter lengths. Um, that's about two and a quarter yards. So I'm gonna thread 
one side through. Just to say, if you're making this for a, a larger man, I'd probably use a bit more than two meters. If you're making it for a smaller lady, something like 185 centimeters or, or two yards, but just try it on first. Thread it through as a longer length and then try it on your back and see, see how it feels. So I'm gonna thread it through from one side to start with. A little bit of fiddling going on. So pop out that side, get rid of that cord. So this is just one single cord at the moment, threaded through from one side, flip the bag and push it back through the other facing on the back of the bag. If you've got nice sturdy cord it should go in absolutely fine. So that's one attached. So you can see both cords are coming out to one side and a loop on the other. Now we're going to attach the other side. So we're going to go in from the opposite side. So where you have the loop, we're going to push the cord through from this end. Through this side, flip it over. Sorry about the noise. And then back through, make sure I've got the right cord, back through the front. There we go. So I've got my two cords in there now. I want to pass one side of each, so just one of the cords, through the D-ring on the side. Slippery little sucker. And on that side too. There we go, and now we're ready to finish off our cord ends. So now it's time to join our cords. So there's lots of different ways of finishing off your cord ends. The easiest method, of course, is just to tie them in a knot. And if it's a thinnish cord, that looks absolutely fine. You can use a lighter on the ends and it'll melt the ends of the cord um, so you don't have any ugly lumps. There's crimps that are available, cord crimps, which is basically a piece of metal. You push the two ends together, a piece of metal goes over the top and it's all crimped together. Those are great if you can get hold of them. I couldn't find the right size when I was looking for them. You can actually intertwine the ropes. You can learn to splice them if you've got a perchant for, uh, for sailing or uh, you, know, you have a lot of time spare. I didn't have that much time, so I decided to invent a new way. So if I just move the bag round, what I found was the easiest method for me and the best looking was to actually insert one cord into the other. So if you've used marine cord or braided rope, something like I have, you'll find they have an internal core. So if you just pull out an inch or so of that and chop it off, you can pull the covering back over itself and you'll find there's a bit of a, a gap. I'm gonna pull a bit more of that. You'll find there's a bit of a, a hole, shall we say, inside the cord there. So you can just insert the other side. You can trim it down. I'll grab my tape. I used a bit of clear tape here just to tidy up that end. Now don't worry about sewing through clear tape. It doesn't seem to gum your needle up and it doesn't seem to do any damage. So insert that end onto there. Again, just a bit of clear tape. This is literally just to hold it until we get it to the, to the sewing machine. Looks a little messy, but it all gets tidied up at the end. So you can see there. So don't pull it at the moment because it will come apart. This is literally so we can get it to the machine. So I'm going to take that to the machine and we're going to zigzag a few rows of stitching from the cord, from the full cord, over the join, making sure we've got an inch or so each side and a few rows all the way around. So I've passed the cord under my sewing machine. I've set my machine to zigzag. So I'm just going to go right down the cord, start a bit above, go down an inch or so further on. And go and we're well past. I'm going to go back again. I'm going to reverse. I'm going to turn the cord, turn the cord slightly. It's a little bit fiddly. Turn it slightly. Put it back in. Stitch along again. It is a lot stronger than you think. This zigzag. You won't have any problems with it coming apart afterwards. 
I'm going to go back up the other side. Nobody mentioned women and reversing while I'm doing this. Okay, so you can do that as many times as you want, just to, as, as long as you feel it's strong enough. But I've found about four or five uh, lengths of zigzag is plenty to give it some strength. And now we're going to wrap that to disguise our end, ends and bits of tape and everything else. So trim it up and we'll go and get our next little piece of fabric. So finally we're going to disguise our join by using the connector piece K. So I've cut this from a piece of fabric, well actually from a non-fraying piece of fabric, so something like vinyl or cork. Um, something that you don't have to seam on the edges so it's going to tidy this up. I've put a little bit of um, double-sided tape on one side so we're basically just going to wrap that around there and then zigzag over the very edge of it to neaten it up. So just wrap it around and find the width that suits best. So I'm going to need about that much. I'm just going to snip that down. Take my double-sided tape off. It's just to pretty it up at the end. Go. You should be able to wiggle that around. And now I'm going to take that to the machine and literally just zigzag over that end just to tidy up that edge. So I've got my zigzag stitch ready. I've put my connector under there. So we're just using this to conceal any raw edges and any messy joins underneath. So literally it's wrapped round. I'm just zigzagging over that connector to disguise the raw edge now definitely use a tonal stitch on this. I'm using black obviously just so you can see it but do use a matching thread for this operation. There we go. And that's your straps finished off. So you're done. You've completed your sport look sack. I hope you've enjoyed it and I uh, hope you're really proud of what you've made. Cinch it up, put your money in and off we go to the shops or to the office. I hope you found the tutorial, tutorial really easy to follow along and uh, I'd love to see your pictures. Please do join my Facebook board. It gives lots of help and support for my patterns. I'm always around and I'd love to see your pictures. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just ring the bell below. There's lots of new free tutorials going forward. And thank you for joining me again. I hope to see you soon on another Spencer Og tutorial. What are you waiting for? Go sew.